Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to another Wild Rift video and in today's video I'll be playing one of the most fun champions to play in the game and also one of the strongest champions right now if you play him correctly, which is Corky guys. So Corky's build changed completely and in the beginning, in the beginning part of the video I'm going to explain to you how to build Corky and you have to see today's gameplay. Let me just tell you I was completely hard carrying the game but did we win and you, you just have to see it. I have so much to teach you about Corky. This champion is, I almost want to say broken, but let's now talk about how to build him. So you guys remember his old build, right? Like it's not exactly this, but you would basically go for, um, it was it was basically something like this, right? Where you would go for a mana immune and then for a Trinity Force. This was an okay build, but it really didn't, it, it just didn't feel right when playing Corky, right? Like Trinity Force on Corky? No. Now this is the real deal guys, this build right here, oh my god, it, it's, it's absolutely perfect, this is like legit a masterpiece build, so let's talk about it immediately, it's really all about this item, Essence Reefer, guys, Essence Reefer, like the, the reason that this is the absolute perfect quirky item, First of all, your first ability, you can see, like it's an ability that you can spam, you literally throw a bomb and it's so easy to hit. The second reason is your third ability, also very easy to hit. Uh, the ultimate reason is your ultimate, guys. It's the ultimate reason. You got to, got to get the joke. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, so, yeah, your ultimate. Every time you shoot a rocket, you're going to be dealing that bonus physical damage from the Essence Reefer. This is absolutely huge. Like, you are already going to have a pretty massive power spike on Corky when you only have an Essence Reefer, when you only have your first item. Like, back in the days, Corky would not be strong in the early game because with, with only a Man Immune, you would not be strong. Like, you guys remember that, right? But with this item, you don't need a Man Immune anymore because attacks restore 2% missing mana on hit, which is really, really good, guys. Um, so, for, so, for the boost that you want to get... Let's see, I have here I have these ones, Glutinous Greaves, but there's basically two boots that you want to go for. Glutinous Greaves in 90% of the games, no, actually 100%. Like, I was going to talk about Ionia Boots of Lucidity, but no, you don't need them, because you already have 25 Ability Haste from this item, and you're going to get 25 Ability Haste from Solaris Charge Bit as well, so you don't need the Ionia Boots anymore. Um, so, Plated Steel Caps, I mean, if the enemy is full attack damage, you could go for them, but honestly, I would still go for the Glutinous Greaves, and see, the reason for that is because... It gives you physical and magical vamp. Corky deals physical and magical damage. So you basically have Omni Vamp, which means vamp on everything. You heal up from any damage that you deal. And the thing with Corky is he deals a buttload of damage. So that's why this is incredibly powerful because you can heal up some of that damage you deal, right? So for your second item, you have two choices. Let me tell you the two choices. Solaris Charge Blade or Infinity Edge. So the way that you can choose is do you want more burst and poke damage then you go for the infinity edge second item because what this is gonna do is it's gonna give you 55 plus 40 which is not 95 attack damage 95 that's a lot of attack damage right and of course your crits are gonna be dealing even more damage so the burst damage that you have is really big but you're gonna have low attack speed and that's where the solaris charge bit comes through solaris charge bit is gonna be better in longer fights because first of all you have um you have more attack speed, you already have a lot of attack damage, so you're gonna do more damage in the longer term. You're gonna deal with the true damage, and it gives you abilities, so you're gonna be able to hit more abilities. But as I said, less burst damage, more sustained damage, but it's way more sustained damage. So you have to balance it yourself. Do you want burst damage? Like, do you just wanna poke the enemy? Just do an insane amount, like insane amounts of poke damage? You get the infinity at second. What happened? If you just want sustained damage, Solaris Charge Bait. Um, by the way, you get either of them as the third item. These are always going to be your first three items. Essence Reefer, Solaris Charge Blade, Infinity Edge. So now here it gets interesting. Your fourth item. What the hell? What the hell is a Void Staff doing here? What the hell is a Void Staff? This must be a joke, right? No, it's not a joke. So let me tell you. On Corky, um, you deal 80% of your damage is magic damage. And 20% is physical damage. See, even though you build attack damage, Corky kind of converts it into ability power. Um, well, not ability power, magic damage. So when you buy uh, when you buy armor penetrating items like um, Cyril Does Grudge or Mortal Reminder, it's only going to be effective for 20% of the damage that you're going to be dealing, which is the you know the physical damage. 
So you obviously don't want to be building these items. What you do want to be building is a Void Staff because 80% of your basic attack damage is going to be ability power and shredding 40% of their uh, magic resist is obviously going to be really big in the late game. Like basically after this item, you're going to be invincible. You're going to be dealing the most insane amount of damage and you're really going to have to have a really bad team. It, like if you're snowballing with Corky, you're really going to have to have a really bad team to lose after getting a void stuff because you're even like you're going to be shredding tanks as if they're nothing after this item for your last item guardian angel you know just for the extra attack damage and the guardian angel of course it's it's always going to be good on corky to go for a guardian angel and for your enchantment you want to get stasis enchant now especially because of your package so the thing is um, when you use your package sometimes you could be vulnerable to taking a lot of damage so using your package and then using your stasis afterwards could be very powerful because you know you're going to be throwing uh, uh the trail behind you which deals a lot of damage it slows the enemy by a lot and the enemies haven't killed you yet more on this during the gameplay part by the way so let's now talk about the runes. Um, the first rune, Conqueror. You always want to go for Conqueror. Um, see, even though I really like poke damage on Corky, it's never going to be worth to go for Ari or something. No. Just go for Conqueror because, you know, in these longer fights with the third ability, you're just going to be dealing a lot of damage. And Conqueror really contributes to that as well. For my second rune, I always go for Champion on Corky. Always. There is no exception. Um, and I'm, I'm going to tell you to do that too. Like, even though it's very risky... I really want to teach you guys to play champion on the right champions, on the right champions. The reason for that is because Corky in the early game, you can be very, pa uh, no, not passive. Um, your survivability is pretty high, right? Like um, if you get ganked, you can jump away with your second ability. But the main reason that you want to run champion is because of your first ability. Your first ability already deals quite a lot of poke damage to the enemy. But of course, when you get the champion rune, it deals even more damage. It deals 8% more damage. So you're going to be very annoying in your lane with your poke, with your first ability. And Corky kind of has a weakness in the early game. He's like not the strongest early game champion. But when you get to the late game, he's insane. He's insanely powerful. So the champion rune is supposed to make your laning good. You know, the poke damage that you deal to the enemy, not allowing the enemy to completely bully you in the lane. That's kind of why you want to go for the champion rune, just to survive the early game. And here as well, bone plating. This is just for the early game, really. Like when you get to the late game, you just really don't need any other room. You just need the bone plating to survive the early game, right? Like if you take, if you take consecutive damage from an enemy champion, bone plating is gonna save your ass, guys. And for your fourth room, you have to go for mana flow band. I used to go for sweet tooth like the first two games, but you're gonna run out of mana so fast. You really 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 need a mana flow band and it really perfectly synergizes with essence reaver as well because essence reaver restores two percent of your missing mana so when you're on very low mana and you have the mana flow band you know it's going to be 300 extra mana you're going to be restoring more mana with your basic attacks right that, that's kind of how it works um for your spells you want to go for barrier and flash barrier because you uh, yeah you're like you need barrier <laughs> you always need barrier so enough about this let's get into the gameplay and i'm sorry that i'm not editing this video it's because i i'm having some issues with my computer i had to reset it today again but you probably don't care but basically i don't have an editing program right now but it's okay now let's talk about Corky. This champion, guys. Oh my god, this champion is so nice. So let's immediately talk about when to pick him. Because you guys, you guys tell me in the comments, you know, I read the comments obviously. You tell me that I should talk more about how to draft champions, right? Like you guys really like the tips and tricks that I gave and things like that. But I also read a lot of people, uh, well, complaints, and they were like, yeah, but when do I play the champion? So let me immediately tell you. The first. Ooh, the first. Um, thing that i have to say about picking corky and this is a draft where you would always have to pick corky is if the enemy has tanky champions that cannot dive you like garen like brom like mundo like shivana basically well not tanky sorry like melee champions i would say darius is another good example uh singed um alistar no alistar can actually dive you but alistar is still a good example because you can actually dodge his engage with your second ability basically tanky champions you know like very big tanks because corky really works well against them his third ability shreds armor and magic resist and just the way that corky works is just perfect against them perfect perfect because you do physical damage and magical damage it's going to be really hard for them to build against you and 
um, these tanks are likely going to be building armor. See, the way that Wild Rift kind of works is tanky champions, they spam armor and they only buy like one magic resist item, right? Like they buy all armor and then they just get a force of nature, just one magic resist item. That would, like, it's going to make you stronger. See, you don't really want to pick Corky against champions that can completely outrange you. Like Nami, you can see it right in this lane. Nami is a very annoying matchup. Because she has that stupid, she has her stupid abilities. Like Nami is probably one of the worst matchups in the game. But why did I still pick Corky if Nami is one of the worst? Oh, eee, Jesus Christ! <laughs> what? Look at that! I just got two kills in the early game with Corky. If I didn't have Champion Rune right here. I wouldn't have gotten a single kill here. Are you guys seeing the power of the champion rune right now? Are you guys? Are you guys? Are you guys seeing the power of the champion rune right now? But what was I talking about? Yeah, this is this is um, this is not gonna be the hardest, but test your knowledge, guys. Why did I pick Corky against what might be the, like one of the worst matchups in in the game? Why did I still pick Corky this game? Like, look at the enemy champions. Look at just just observe and. Tell me, why did I pick Corky in this game? Because let me tell you, the enemy champions are one of the worst matchups to me, really. It's really one of the worst matchups. So, pause the video, put it on the comments if you want to test your knowledge, of course. I'm also doing skin giveaways, so put down a comment anyways. Also on Instagram. By the way, I have 1,999 followers right now on Instagram. Kind of curious, it's going to be, you know, the 2,000th follower. It's kind of weird how you say that word, 2,000. Whatever. Oh, I knew it. I knew. Look, at this here, I knew that the Evelyn was there. I absolutely knew that the Evelyn was there. Because I pinged, I pinged my team. Guys, don't go in. If you rewind the video, you can actually see me ping, uh, ping my teammates to not go in. You can see it. Like You can see that I told them to not go in. Because it was really obvious. Because we could see the Evelyn on the map. And it was really obvious that she would wander around it. So now let me answer your question. It's very simple actually, you know, the test your knowledge. I'm giving some simple ones too, but I feel like they might be so simple that you just might oversee them. So why did I pick Corky? Because my team has zero ability power. That's literally it. And that, see, that's also kind of the power of Corky. Um, even though you might be against uh, bad matchups, um, if your whole team kind of trolls the draft like my team did, they all picked attack damage champions. I was like, okay, you know what? I can either go for another attack damage champion and allowing the enemies to easily counter me, or I go for Corky and deal ability power. And the answer is Corky. You should really go for the Corky pick. It's just, you don't want to give the enemy the opportunity to just hard counter you with armor. Look at the burst damage, by the way. So there is like, a, there is a certain combo that Corky has, which deals insane burst damage. This is like, this is my favorite Corky combo, which is, during your third ability, like you already start your third ability during this combo because you want to shred the armor and magic resist. What you do is you basic attack, first ability, and then your ultimate. And the way that it works is while your basic attack is traveling, you know, you, uh, you shoot your first ability and then your ultimate. And what's going to happen is it's all going to hit the enemy at the same time. It's all going to hit the enemy at the same time. Thus, it's going to do so much burst damage. It's just like the enemy will, enemies will never see that big burst damage come. And you'll see, me, you'll see me use that combo many, many times in this game. It's just so powerful. Now, it's especially powerful if you use it with, um, if you use it with a red rocket. Because you have like two orange rockets, the small rockets. And then one big red rocket, which has longer range, a bigger boom, and more damage. So you like if you can use it with the big red rocket, it deals way more damage. Like it just deals crazy amounts of damage. It's really really crazy. Honestly, I would almost say it's unbalanced. Really, if you just do it correctly. I have a package here. I really want to use it. I want to fight, but not really finding a good fight. Yeah, kind of an unfortunate package. Not gonna lie. Yeah, I just kind of used my package start to get some damage. It is what it is, you know. I kind of wasted my package here. So using your package is often really good before dragons, barons, things like that. But I obviously didn't do it for the first dragon because we were... 
Oh, here, look, I went on a vulnerable target. I obviously didn't, didn't do it for the first dragon because I had to stay there, right? Like, I had to stay and help my team. And let me tell you what I did there in the fight. This was actually perfect what I did. So with Corky, um, in a situation like that, where you're against three enemies, yeah, I pinged him to go away and off. He didn't go away and now he just gave them a free kill. In situations like that, you don't want to be running away always. What you can do is, as I said, Corky deals a lot of burst damage. You can pretty much one-shot a squishy champion, like the enemy Nami. What I did is I used my third ability, and using your third ability is actually really important, because, especially if the enemy is squishy, it's flat armor penetration. It's not a percentage. It 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 penetrates like flat armor penetration, like Yuma's Ghost Blade, you know, and, and uh, Dusk Blade of Draktar. So, the squishier the enemy is, the stronger your third ability is. And against the squishy champions, you get, like, the little armor that they have, you're, you're gonna be shredding it, right? You're gonna be shredding it. And you're basically gonna, you're basically almost gonna be dealing true damage to them. That's kinda how it works. Because they, they, they have so little armor left, so almost all of your damage is gonna go through. So, a Nami is not gonna survive for more than two seconds against me. Especially when you do your combos correctly. Basic attack, first ability, ultimate, right? They're not gonna survive to do that. Well, that's pretty sad. I can get my Infinity Edge, it's gonna do so much damage, like, when you get that Infinity Edge, especially as early as I am getting right now, you really wanna look for fights on Corky, because these are power spikes that are just, that just through the roof, like, you really, really, really through the roof your power, but see, there is a small problem, like, look at the enemy composition, they have burst champions, and this is also a thing that Corky is definitely not amazing against, because what these champions can do, like, Evelyn, like Darius, like Annie, they can one-shot me, right? They can literally one-shot me. So you have to be very careful when playing against champions like that. Because you don't want to get one-shotted, of course. Look at the Ezreal damage, by the way. He's also doing quite a lot of damage. Even though I dominated our lane, he got a free turret. Because that jungler actually did really good. So he kind of made a comeback. <clears throat> oh, our Mastery is trolling with his build, by the way. Look at his build. He has a dusk plate of Tractor. It's literally a troll. He's like he's actually trolling. He's probably he probably wants to lose to go back from Grandmaster to Master. I'm picking my team to not go in here because I have to get my package. I really have to go back and get my package for this fight. But they're not going back. So as like I'm not gonna leave I'm not gonna abandon my team. I really don't wanna fight, but I'm not gonna abandon my team. And as you can see, it's obviously really bad for us. Oh, this is so bad. Oh, he filled his flash. Darius is just standing there now. <laughs> Man, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just demolishing them. And what I really like about Corky is the third ability. It's like, the third ability, it kind of makes him a bit, uh, way easier to play. Because you literally don't have to do anything with the third ability. On the PC version, your third ability goes right in front of you. But on Wild Rift, your third ability auto aims on enemies. And it's like literally so easy to do so all you do is you just click on your third ability and get close to enemies and you're going to be dealing so much more damage as i said especially against squishies and you always want to use it you never want to ignore your third ability guys always use it because the cooldown is pretty low it's not that much and um you just always want to be using it in team fights always 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 it's going to amplify your damage by so much so here you know, am I gonna take my package? I probably shouldn't. Oh wait, I should, there is a Baron, never mind, never mind. Baron is up, so I should take my package. Sometimes I actually skip my package because um, um, there are no objectives. Like when there is no Baron and no Dragon, I sometimes just skip the package because I wanna save it for when there is an objective. I just went right on the Annie, easy kill. Look, and look at, also look at my damage on the, on the other guy, on the Nami, insane. It's funny, oh, look at that damage. It was only a first ability and an ultimate at 50% of his HP. And it was not even an empowered ultimate. It's like, how crazy is that quirky damage, guys? Just tell me. Oof. That saved my ass. And now he's dead. Ha! Huh. Get wrecked. Easy. <laughs> uh. Uh. Oh. Sorry. 
about the ultimate um you really want to be using like you really want to be spamming that ability in team fights as well see it, his playstyle also changed because back in the days where you would build trinity force on corky the way that you kind of wanted to play him was you use an ability and then a basic attack right that's kind of how it worked because because of the sheen of the trinity force so you would use your ultimate and then basic attack an enemy you don't have to do that anymore now of course you can just spam your ultimate in team fights just hit their champions and the ultimate explodes right so if there's like two or three enemies close to each other your ultimate is gonna uh, be worth more because you can actually hit them you can just hit three enemies at the same time and deal the explosion damage to all of them right now i got my solaris charge bit and like my power spike at this point i'm i have nine kills and one death this means we have to fight and yeah he says towers because we, we only got a single tower in this whole game we should indeed get some towers because um when you're in a game and even though you're super ahead like i'm super ahead right now we don't have many towers so it like we don't have a lot of space to do stuff because the enemies can just back up to our towers and we can't because our towers are all the way back so getting towers is really really important and um sometimes like sometimes getting um getting towers is worth sacrificing your life on because towers are just so important in this game. It literally opens up the whole map. This Malphite is playing really, really well, by the way. Like, this Malphite is doing really, really well. I'm screwed here, though. Yeah. And the rest of my team all died as well, apparently. I'm legendary! We got the legendary again! Uh, by the way guys if you're enjoying this video make sure you give it a like you know it really helps the channel and uh, blah 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 just you know, just do it if you're enjoying it and my package is up and the dragon is spawning this is perfect this is absolutely perfect I like dragon fights is what corky uh, dragon and baron fights is what corky excels at with the package but during the next dragon fight i'm gonna be making a crucial mistake with my package and i really want you guys to pay attention to what i'm gonna do just pay attention to how I'm going to use my package. So obviously the way that you want to use your package is you want to intervene with the enemies as much as you can. You want to throw it in the middle of all of them and just annoy the hell out of them. That's kind of how you want to use it. So let's take a look at what I'm going to do here. I just want to show you guys. Okay, we got the dragon. Look at my, look at my package. Okay. So the package itself, the way that I went was good. It was really good. But that like that right there, what I did was um, that right there was kind of the weakness of the package. It, and it is, you're vulnerable. You're diving all the way deep into the enemies and they can just focus you, right? Like even though you're dashing and you're unstoppable, they can still hit you. They can still hit you while you're dashing to them. So you have to be very careful when doing that because like the Annie just killed me with her ultimate and they all focused me and you know like you have to be careful of that and my whole team is useless so when I died obviously they all died as well so I have to be really careful especially in a game like this because when your team is useful or useless you have to be the one that carries the game right so you can't make plays like that you can't make mistakes like that you literally have to be playing perfectly and even then there is no guarantee to win so your team just is gonna screw up so hard. So right now I can get a Void Staff. I should So I should get the red buff, Void Staff, and I'm gonna deal so much damage. It's just so insane. I really have to find a moment to go back. Oh, we're doing, we're starting here. Nah. Yeah. Not a good idea. I saved my ass with the stasis though, and I killed him. That was very nice. It was not a good idea to start Baron though. I don't know why we did that. This is too much. Yeah. I don't have my item. I don't have a red buff. Why are we fighting here? We should not engage. I don't want to go in. I just don't want to go in here. So I'm just farming, pushing out this wave. But they're fighting for some reason. Yeah, I just flashed out because I didn't want to deal with them. Yeah, and we're just we're just like we're throwing the game again here. We already did that huge throw at the dragon. I went in on the Ezreal here because I thought that I could get a kill, and I could have gotten the kill, but he got his barrier. So unfortunately, it was not quite enough damage. And 
This, like, this game is so annoying because I'm doing so well, but I made like a few crucial mistakes which really kind of cost the game for me in this game because my team is not, my team is unable to back me up. And as I said, in games like those, you really have to be careful with your positioning because one tiny little mistake is going to cost you an entire team fight. It's going to cost you Baron, it's going to cost you Dragon. It's just going to cost you the entire game, right? Like that one package of me at that Dragon kind of cost me this game. I could have carried this game maybe. Now we lost, we just lost three uh, inhibitors. I mean, what the hell are we going to do, right? I'm going to try to defend though. I got my package. Let's see what I'm going to do. Boom. This package is so good, by the way. Look at this. Oh my god. Do you see what happens if, if you combo Corky's abilities perfectly? This is what happens. Oh, he's on me. Yeah, I'm dead. That's what happens when you combo Corky's abilities perfectly, guys. You're gonna heart burst an enemy squishy champion like the Yasuo, uh, like the Ezreal. He was at like 70% HP. I just one shot at him. I literally one shot at him. It's crazy. It's just actually crazy how much damage he deals, Corky. Man, what is this master you doing though? Oh, so awkward. Look at this. We killed four of them and we can't do anything. We just have to defend our base. Master solo Drake. Master E should indeed solo the Drake actually. And then we teleport to him. That would probably be the best call. He solos the dragon and Thresh, uh, Thresh defense. Like, I don't know if Thresh can defend, but that's kind of what we have to do right now. Like, last resort, right? It's kind of, yeah. He has to defend as well. It's just, we have to go Drake. We really have to go to this dragon. That's our last hope. I'm telling my, like, I'm just telling my Yasuo to stay and the rest has to come. Rest has to come fight, 4 versus 5. That's kind of the only thing that we can do. Yasuo has to stay at base and we have to fight 4 versus 5. It's our only chance of winning. But the Malphite and the rest of the team didn't follow up. Thra Thresh was not there. This was, It was just all messed up. And, you know, like I did my best this game, but like what else can I do? What else can I do? There's really not anything else that I can do. Let's see. Yeah. I I, I can't do anything. I killed Danny though. And a funny little thing about Corky is the third ability actually